a very mediocre... Well, first of all, he can't write, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. it, you know, these diaries, I've, I've got them here somewhere. Yeah. You know, just these one, deathless lines, you know. <laughs> what, first of all, what price love? I've always known from novels that people will risk everything. I mean, I'm sorry, just, it's just the sheer banality of it. It's, I think he's a creep, actually. It's horrific. I know he isn't here to defend himself. Now, the book was ghostwritten with Isabel Oakeshott, presumably from diaries that Hancock was keeping at the time. I don't even know which shocking part to pick first, Amy, what did you think of it? I thought, I genuinely thought it's going to be banal, but it's just going to be fairly harmless. It's just going to be. What I did not anticipate is the dripping stupidity that comes out of every single paragraph. It's like he's trying to create the Matt Hancock, Mills and Boone novel. And it actually makes me quite sick. Yeah. And um, for me, the a hilarious part is when he went to Boris and before taking professional advice, he took personal advice. He took personal advice of serial philanderer Boris Johnson about <laughs> matters of the heart. And when he says, Gina and I, we'd fallen in love and we'd fallen in love deeply. Oh, I oh mean, well, that's honestly, fine, isn't the, it? You the know. only thing this man is taking any responsibility for is falling in love. Can you take some responsibility for something else, please? One of the bits of these, this shocked me, and I have to say there are insights. I would never buy this book, but there are insights which are draw dropping for instance, apparently they decided in Cabinet not to put masks on children in schools. Then they heard that Nicola Sturgeon was putting masks on children in schools with all of the damage we now know, and it was obvious to anybody with half a brain that was going to happen. And so they reneged and they U-turned. And he quite clearly admits we had to do this because it's what Nicola Sturgeon was yeah, doing. But don't you think this every single part of this, he's deflecting the blame, deflecting blame? That's yes. because of Nicola Sturgeon. And how dare he blame care workers for the decision to put the care home residents back into into the care homes. That is appalling. That should have killed any chance of celebrity status, surely, Absolutely. this admission for me. He says in this interview um, that the, the conversation he had to have about his, um, you know, kiss and tell, it was the worst conversation of my life. Well, what about the COVID relatives yeah. who had to have the conversations, the worst conversations of their lives, probably through an iPad, to, to their dying relatives because of mistakes. What about that the Matt conversation made? with Kate Bingham, where Kate Bingham said we don't need to vaccinate everybody indiscriminately, regardless of age or health conditions, and he said yes, we do, and she wanted to spend thirty million, and he said no, we're going to spend hundred million. I mean, th th there are so many mistakes in this, Peter. I'm going to do a little monologue about this tomorrow, I think, because I need to sit down and get it out of but my. But those system. are the conversations that should be focused on, not a conversation about oh, I've snogged my secretary. Oh, the narcissism. Like, don't is try and. Uh... And the other thing about this, I think, is that obviously he's trying to get some kind of career going after politics and, it, politics and it kind of looks like it might be working. Yeah. I mean, no, it that, must that, not let it work. Well, no, but that's one of the, that's one of the indictments of yeah. the way we are now, isn't it, with our culture? But that's why we need up. to keep talking about what happened in the care homes. We need to keep yeah. talking about those PPE contracts, the 29 yeah. million or whatever. And the got. damage to children.